Yesterday, someone sent me a video by some American ethnologist, anthropologist, saying that the notorious Vatican has its name from the Etruscan goddess Vatica of the underworld, which is a fantastic discovery by the good man, which was in fact not entirely his discovery, as this British video from 2017 proves. But hey, that's what YouTube is about, and to work together and add more each time. Only I believe, for honesty's sake, a certain ethic should be maintained for fraternity's sake, instead of just chasing the ego in the system's rat race of Pharaoh. Now, when I saw the picture of the goddess Vatica, it opened up a vortex, seeing a whole sequence of stuff portraying in front of my eyes, which I always have when connecting to ancient Egypt, a phenomenon I can't entirely explain where that comes from, but it happens to me, and it's not only because I'm a historian and academic, but more related to my ancestry of the house of saint croix rose du Plessis. I'll better not go and see Bob Larson and have it cleaned out for a reset reboot called Exorcism. Because then you won't have these videos anymore. I guess having ancestral demons also has a good side. As long as you control them and not them controlling you. Anyway, at least I do something against the forces of darkness. Instead of all those lethargic dogmatic Christians and Muslims sitting on their Bibles who don't serve God but only pray that God serves them. Okay, I'm drifting off again. I was not, I wanted to tell you. Well, the moment I saw the picture of the goddess Vatica, like Vatican without an N, something sucked me in. Shlup. And I started seeing the whole sequence passing in front of my radar. My grandmother in South Africa had the same, uh, like our prophet Sina van Rensburg. It's an Afrikaans word, Sina, and it sounds in English like Sina, but it's more the opposite, I can tell you. And my grandmother had the same name as that poor South African child here, starved to death in Lord Kitchener's and Lord Winston Churchill's concentration camps in the SA, South Africa that is, killing 28,000 defenseless white Christian children. In aristocracies, concentration camps are pharaoh. Well, that's why, and because of the pious Huguenot atmosphere among the Afrikaner nation in the SA, we are friends with the Jews, because we know who the enemy is, and those lords slotting our babies to win the Boer War and get the gold mines. Later in life, Grandma Lizzie told me about Sina, and that she had it too, telling me many other things about it, which I can't all tell you now. Only that always skips one generation. So my mum didn't have it. And that always predicted visits beforehand, which I can't even remember from my very young age at the time. Grandma said it manifests only twice in life. First, when very young, and secondly, at the end. And it did come back. Grandma was right. A generational curse, as Bob Larson would say. Oh, I want to hold on to the adorable little intrinsic beast, Bob, and only use it for the better. Good for hacking the devil back, like having a spy infiltrated amongst the powers of evil, enabling to understand, acknowledge, and comprehend, in order to find the adequate spot to strike back. In spite of the Boer language and the Boer's Flemish names, we are majoritarily French Huguenots escaping the Vatican's butchery, genociding us in St. Bartholomew's night and day in 1572. Um, thus, coming back to the goddess Vatica, 
and her Vatican uh, dedicated to her through Maria worship, substituting God. And of course, Vatica of the Etruscans is one of the various representations of the Egyptian goddess Isis, as the Etruscans had all the Egyptian gods in their pantheon of Pharaoh. Now, just a simple but very effective question. Why are there several Roman emperors on this list of pharaohs? Well, the answer, because Rome is the chronicle extension of Pharaoh, bringing his soldiers and slaves from Egypt with them, becoming the Italians, the nearest place in Europe, after having crossed the dip from Egypt and genociding Europe to this very day and still going on. Rome didn't conquer Egypt but Egypt conquered Rome, or more exactly, Egypt made Rome through the Pharaonic Etruscans. And this is also why we find the Egyptian word Sar for king or pharaoh in the word Sardinia, Sardinia, following the Pharaonic conquest of Europe and Pharaoh's original slaves, now called Italians. Because Pharaoh's personal bodyguards, called the Chardin, Chardana, or simply the Shards from Tsar, and for the Tsar, or Tsar, King Pharaoh, first came to Sardinia in their conquest of the free tribes of Europe. As you can read here for yourself, just punch pause in Wikipedia about the Chardana, the Sherduna, the Shards, it's all here. And there are even Egyptian hieroglyphs showing these fellows here, as you can see here. Members of Ramses II's Chardin personal guard in a relief in Abu Simbel. Okay. So therefore, having the all-seeing eye during a light show, as in Illuminati, eliminated light, in Pharaoh's object here in London called the Shard. Eh? Pharaoh's guard or shard in Demotic, which almost sounds like guard, shard, guard. If you'd imagine an old pharaonic mummy with no more teeth in his mouth getting satanically resurrected out of his grave, pronouncing God slightly different, like shard, because of his missing teeth and using another word from the mummy's mumbling. I'm the good shard of London, looking over my dumb British slaves. So I had to go back in history to explain who's persecuting who and where are the, uh, the, the big armies from who are killing people all over. So coming back to the Huguenots then. Many researcher, researchers don't know what happened to the numerous French Huguenot Protestants and dissident aristocracy in France, because there are no further historical signs of more massacres by Vatica and her Vatican on the Huguenots in France, as the Bartholomew Night of 1572 in Paris and the weeks that followed, they just vanished. Where did they go? What happened to the rest? Well, they escaped as far as they could to the lowlands and Germany, changing names and language to get off Vatica's radar. But Vatica and her Vatican gang got track of them, got track of them, and pursued them, pursued them with huge armies of Swiss Guard mercenaries of the Vatican gang by Vatica, called Helvetica, Helvetica of Swaziland, culminating only 46 years later into the most horrendous 30-year war from 1618 to 1648, leaving 20 million Germans dead. As a result of Octagon's murderous Swiss mercenaries, a Swiss precision job with the collateral damage of at least 30 million dead Europeans, most of them Germans. And the escaping French Huguenots on German territory chased by the beast and their Swiss breathing into their necks. 
of the desperate French Protestants trying to save their children from the Swiss beast, base of Vatica, Hell Vatica, Suis, the Sisters of Isis, or Sœur d'Isis, Suis, in French. My ancestors were running for their lives and souls back then, until a raging Dutch fleet sank all the Spanish and Portuguese ships of the Conquistadores with the Templars cross on it and full of Inca and Maya gold to pay the Swiss mercenaries of Helvetica with, and that was the end of the war. When the rest of the Germans got saved by the Dutch and the remarkable Admiral Mikhail de Reuter, for which the Satanic House of Orange had the good Admiral terrorized, tortured and murdered. The Admiral who saved Europe and what was left of the few remaining French Huguenots. This is a fantastic video, go and see it. So only four years um, after the Thirty Year War, South Africa could be founded by Jan van Riebeek in 1652 at Cape of Good Hope. Well, good Hope for those persecuted French Huguenots. By the time having Dutch, Flemish and German names and speaking Dutch or German, just wanting to go as far as possible from Vatica and Helvetica and Vatica Swiss Guard or a guard to the temple of Vatica, as in the film The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. And well, you can read the whole thing here yourself, it's quite interesting. And here you can read it here. The uh, French Protestants, uh, on the other hand, who had fled because of religious persecution, mostly belonged to the bourgeoisie, and what's more, a quart of them even had typically aristocratic names, judging from the passengers. Uh, lists. This is why the Afrikaner Boers are very different from the Dutch. We don't like homosexuality, we like our guns and we don't hate the Jews and do not collaborate with the Nazis. There have been even books written like South Africa was made by the French, as you can read here in, Fran in French. Huguenots et Français ont fait l'Afrique du Sud. How do I know all this? Because in the family we wrote things down for future generations as our house has a history and a tradition. So any, anybody who doesn't write things down doesn't have a history. It's like they never existed at all. So when I saw that picture of Vadiga, I suffered an unexplainable shock, getting shell-shocked by the powers opening up the vortex, blasted away by the red and white squares on Vatica's forehead, red and white, Templars colors of their hideout in the Alps, referring to Pharaoh's red and white house, the double square concept of four, doubling up to eight for octagon, the square base of a pyramid by the holy number seven of Pharaoh of square plus compass, therefore the triangle concept on a forehead of three, referring to the compass for the accumulated tradition of the seven, all explained in my film, in my Swiss Beast video. And the car, or the physical soul and intrinsic life energy of the pharaohs in the name Vati car, or Helveti car for Switzerland. And you can see the symbol down below with the arms and the hands stretch out to the sides, just as Freemasons do. I can tell you what that all means, but that will take too long because this video is about something else. So here you can see an old pharaonic depiction of the, the car symbol. And it shows, of course, uh, two times the square, you know, uh, it's for, for the square and compass. Right? And here you can read a part of the car statue here in Wikipedia. Just punch pause and have great fun. Okay, there, there we go. We can see the car sign here, like moving the hands up and down like this, as you can see in the pic. And it means, you know, like uh, it's a help sign, you know, please help me. If there's another Freemason around, you have to help me, you know. 
and uh, otherwise uh, Satan will punish you because I'm one of you. I'm also a pharaoh. So they use this in court, in politics, in business, you know, like um, uh, giving away their real um, identity. And it means, O oh Lord, my God, is there no help for the widow's son? So who's the widow? That's Isis or Vetica, of course, Vetica. And um, the widow's son is Horus and the Horus matrix. You know, these are the ones, our masters, who rule over us. And their base is Swaziland in the Alps, Helvetica. And if I'd have my demotic books around me, I could translate the rest of her name into Pharaoh's language as well, telling you what her name represents. Alas, incredibly organized, focused Swiss terror hindering my mission. And as you can witness here, they perfectly know it, making fun out of, uh, of us here with all these sort of things. There are tons of things like this, Helvetica, the initiated and Swissy. They know perfectly well what it all means and what they did. You know, they're very precise in the denial. But they're not very precise in the admittance of their crimes, you see. And they're just laughing of, uh, at us here, you know. And um, it's all over. There are tons of things like this. They portray their country as neutral, never done anything, and clean, nice, snowy mountains. It's not at all like that. The, it's, it's, the, it's the Swiss beast, home of the devil. You see, there are even companies here, like here, called Vetica, you know, with the Templars V at the end. Can you see it? Hey, they're doing design, apparently. They know it perfectly well. It's the goddess of the underworld. It's hell, Vetica. Do you want me to tell you where this company is from? Hey, well, have a guess. Oh, yeah, look, they are from Luzern. Luzern is in Switzerland. It's also one of the low tax cantons. And what did they do? It says here Strategie Entwicklung, strategic design, like Tavistock. Well, it has the same words in it. It's uh, Tavistock, Tavi, Vatica, right? same letters in it. Amongst historians, it's common knowledge that the Roman Empire was founded by the Etruscans and the Pharaonic pantheon of the gods, mostly with other names like Vatica here for Isis. And here you can see, you know, the um, Romulus was the, uh, the first of seven Etrusca, Etruscan kings, just as Swiss, Switzerland has seven heads, heads of state. And here you can see the beast, you know, the Swiss beast. And to rule the in those days, very superstition, superstitious and pagan peoples and various tribes under the Roman Empire, the Pharaonic Vatica gang decided to found a Roman state religion through the invisible belief system, always overhead to watch you under all circumstances, as they knew the Roman Empire couldn't be there all the time to police the people as today in the all-seeing eye total control system. And this is from the fourth century. It's, uh, it's, it's from Germany, it's Germanic. And you see the angel looking at the left, above left, you know, always looking, it sees everything. It, it sees the Germanic warrior here, um, trying to kill the lion, which is a symbol of the aristocracy as the snake is, they're both symbols of the aristocracy and of Pharaoh, as the Pharaoh is having a snake on his head and the Sphinx, which is what their descendants, the aristocracy took over in their coat of arms where there's always a lion. So the, the person who made this uh, drawing from the fourth century, that's a hell of a long time, a Helvetic long time ago, knew perfectly well, you know, who that this uh, Germanic warrior, you know, um, actually just before, uh, if it's from the fourth century, 
in the fifth century, so just a little bit after, the Vandals and the and the, the Germanic tribes they um, they ransacked Rome. You know, Rome is the lion and the snake. You know, the um, what what the um, what came after Pharaoh and which became the aristocracy. So this is an initiated person who made this. And look at the hand, you know, coming out of the sky like, oh, we see it all. Well, you better, you better watch out, homie. And, you know, don't kill our snakes. <clears throat> don't kill our lions because we see everything. It's the all-seeing eye in the sky. You cannot do anything without us knowing it. Therefore, today, not needing the invisible hand in the sky over us anymore. As we have seen, the state church disappearing into oblivion, merely merging into a relics of the pantheon of the gods of Egypt, raping our children on the altar of the goddess, Vatica for Isis, also helping our women to dominate the man in their alliance with Pharaoh through the aristocratic practice of the Hus Prime Noctis, as the police can't be present all day, so letting the man believe since childhood, or oh, be careful, or God will punish you, he says it all with his all-seeing eye on every church. And now the women doing the work for him to come to police us all. We had two world wars with millions of men dead trying to defend their women as they thought to do for getting this here. And now women even portray themselves as victims. But they never died by the millions. The man tried to save them and protect them. Well, they didn't know very much about the enemy within. So, it's all divide and rule, you know. Pharaoh is uh, putting everyone up against each other. It says, roses are red, violets are blue. Hmm. I love smashing the patriarchy with you. It's already smashed. All the men are dead. There's only soy boys left, eh? Now, what do you think the red rose means, eh? It's a symbol for the the red house of Pharaoh, the Bertasser, the old world's order. As I told you, it's the use prime noctis behind it, where the women made an alliance, you know, like Adam and Eve. They made an alliance with the lord of the castle. You know, they got raped in the castle on the first night of their marriage and well, the women who didn't want to, who didn't like that, you know, they they got burned at the stakes. That's the reason. And the women who, the other ones, as a woman is pragmatic, a little bird needs a nest with warmth and enough to eat, you know, all provided by the system we have today where our liberties are being traded by, uh, by all the comforts we have. They bought our liberty, our freedom, with comfort. So she said, "Ah, oh, well, I wasn't wasn't bad after all. You know, in the beginning it was a bit hard, maybe. You know, but it was a prince after all, and um, after afterwards it went smoothly, eh? And um, I had a good meal, a bit of wine, could take a bath." So these two made an alliance, you know, just like all these priests killing the children, making alliance, you know, the demons, they get inside, as Bob Larson says, and he's perfectly right about it. Oh, I, I can, I can rant on about this forever and ever. But okay, this uh, film is not about that. Oh, well, isn't it? Or is it? Vatica, Helvetica. The Sisters of Isis, Swiss Sœur d'Isise. So the Vatican is in fact a pharaonic state religion adoring Isis or Pharaoh or Vatica, Hell Vatica, the Sisters of Isis. So this is really the essence of Adam and Eve and the, the Pharaoh had a snake on his head. It's a snake. 
and the line which we just saw. Uh, and now women betraying us, helping um, uh, helping the snake, right? Therefore, the original pharaonic obelisk in the Vatican's backyard, symbolizing a male sexual organ with the penis of Osiris in a child's backyard. He seems to be saying, and he is saying like, Hail Egypt! Hail Pharaoh! Hail our Swiss God of Hell Vatica! Well, you go explain that to all the nine-year-olds raped by the Church of Wickedness and its invisible pharaonic powers in the sky, eyeballing us, or as they say, all-seeing eyeballing us, and their invisible pharaonic obelisk taking our children in their backyards at an equally invisible moment. Therefore, Vatica's obelisk standing in the Vatican's backyard. Hail Pharaoh, hail Egypt, and hail Svetica, the Swiss god. Hail to the goddess Vatica, hail to the Swiss god of hell Vatica. Hail Pharaoh, hail Egypt, you dumb slaves. The second picture in that anthropologist's film that sparked a strong reaction out of the deep was the symbol of the Carthaginian goddess Tanit, which triggered the following intel. Well, uh, we can see here the Freemason. Get your hands up, this is the FBI. For the pharaonic car, for the soul. Stick them up. A pyramid underneath, the sun overhead, and the octagon, and the two pillars, Yachin and Boaz of the Freemasons, eh? or the Temple of Solomon. And all this you can find projected on the St. Peter's Square of Vatica, or Vatican, which I'll show you in a minute. So, from top down, it says the sun, the soul, car. Pyramid, meaning the soul comes from the sun and arrives in the pyramid, like the Templars Baphomet, ba fe me already translated it for you like 10 years ago, meaning ba, the soul, fa, arrive, and me, pyramid, the soul arrives in the pyramid. Hands up is an ancient sign of surrender, as in this case, surrender like when the sacrifice going on and all these satanic stuff, you know? Surrender, open your heart and suck it all in. And you can also see the hands, it says square and compass. The arms are forming a square two times, so we got the concept of four. And the whole thing has a circle around it, but not in the ancient symbols, but the circle is depicted twice, once in the pyramid and once meaning the sun. So it says square and compass, and all the initiated who sucked it all in that stuff, they see this immediately. Only in this tenet symbol from Sarrepta and Sar Afand, which you can read here, it is more like Kafomet and Baphomet but entirely pharaonic as always, because all the subcultures around come from Pharaoh as the demotic Sar for King Pharaoh adds to the Ka and the pyramid and the rest. The whole, it's, it's all pharaonic as always. And it goes the whole world now. So here I show you once more the differences between Ka and Ba. The Ba is, um, well, it's a bird, a birdie birdie, eh? And so the hands up, like FBI, get your hand up, and um, Freemasons, and this tenet symbol. Well, it's all pharaonic. So the Templars have Baphomet, and this, tem this tenet symbol is Kaphomet. It's all pharaonic. 
I immediately saw the same keyhole configuration of St. Peter's Square with the octagon cross in the middle. So we've got all together octagon of the Sodomite Templars and their Swiss guard. Osiris his phallus, the obelisk in the middle. And a keyhole in, in Vatica's backyard with the stupid slaves believing in their religious hocus pocus. And you can see in the middle, there is even that other circle which on the, um, in, in that stone, which I showed you in the beginning, uh, in the sun, there were two circles. So around the obelisk, there is the, an, another circle, as you can see that, and the, uh, the eight uh, triangles um, around it for octagon. So you'd say, you know, there's something missing, you know, like the car hands are missing. Where are the car hands? We see the sun, the pyramid, or, you know, where are and the whole keyhole thing. So where are the car, the, the hands uh, going up? So I had a look at the, some old paintings here by a Flemish uh, master or Dutch. Uh, and it's from 1681, so it's 350 years ago. Are the hands here, maybe? Well, no. The obelisk is already there. Look at that. So where are the hands? Okay, I've got an idea. Let's have a look at this here. Oh, look, there it is. The old wizard is doing the car himself. He's giving the hands, you know. Everything is there and he's looking out of, on it. The obelisk is there. The keyhole configuration for Tenet is there. The sun is out and the octagon in front of his eyes. Well, let's give it a car and, you know, all the, cr the crowd suck it all in. Eh? I even recently filmed the Carthaginian pharaonic symbol on a French motorway next to the original pharaonic pyramid, the Rata Piñata, which I filmed many years ago on my channels Gure and Gatsefrat. And from Nice in France, you sail the dip and voila, before you know it, you're sailing down River Nile. And look at that, it even has the inner circle just as the carvings in stone and on the Vatican. It's the same. So there are people around us who are absolutely perfectly initiated in all these things and they're hiding it. Hey, Swissy, neutral, never done anything, clean, hidden, right? And on the motorway, everyone passes by, giving a good kick to all the initiates and their satanic perversions, seeing the goddess Tenet, her keyhole. Now, don't pull out your obelisks, guys. Hold your horses. So here's the founding symbol of Rome and its pharaonic Etruscans, as I pointed out in my film lately about the pharaonic extension through Italy, taking the pharaonic slaves with them, who became the Italians, bringing havoc over Europe. But look carefully at this animal. Is that a wolf, that noble and spiritual animal of the northern woods? for which they sell it to us for? Well, actually, this creature here doesn't radiate nobleness at all. And they only want to hide that the animal is not indigenous at all. Here, look at the ears. A wolf doesn't have those sort of ears at all. And look, it doesn't even have that huge brushy wolf's tail, that typical item making it a wolf. It doesn't have that elevated wolf stance of that athlete on four legs of the northern woods, but it has a low stance, not even depicting a form formidable runner, but an overall terrestrial air around it. Here, look, this is what a real wolf would look like with two babies. You know? Just look at it in silence for three seconds three seconds. The silence of the lies they tell us. Now, I'm from Africa, and I can tell you exactly what kind of animal that is of, um, 
um, uh, Ramas and Romulus. And look at this animal here, you know, it's always looking at the side or backwards. <laughs> it always does. Just like the statue of Remus and Romulus, which is not a wolf. Which was um, living in ancient Egypt and depicted on many pharaonic hieroglyphs. Even pharaohs taking the hyena on the leech, as you can see here. Just as they do today. It's a hyena and it has the head to the side, as hyenas do tail between the legs, these funny round monkey ears and a low non-athletic stance. And these Africans who still practice that today, they got the technique to do it from Pharaoh. Now then why else a hyena in the statue of uh, Remus and Romulus of Rome, the statue of the founding of Rome, uh, except from the Pharaonic link? Well, the answer is related to a famous phrase by Cleopatra's brother, Ptolemy, who, want, who said once, and probably repeating it the whole time to everyone who wants to listen, just around going and saying, a lion is not dangerous, but hyenas are. Now, why the Vatican's hell did he say that, hey? First of all, the lion is one of the symbols of the pharaonic dignity of the old world's order and the descendants of the worldwide aristocracy. Like always, two lions holding an ability's coat of arms or in front of a castle. So Ptolemy, already during Pharaoh's time, knew there were forces around to topple the king Pharaoh and put in place the new world's order of the Republic's horizontal rule. Secondly, a lion king of the jungle is an animal surviving in a patriarchal life form, and not like here depicted by female man-haters with their hate speech against anything that's masculine, including male animals like a lion. For Fucktube and the politicians, this hate speech is perfectly all right. But if I would dare to pronounce the specific name of this group of people, then I'd have my video deleted by Fucktube, or even worse. So on the other hand, whereas a hyena lives entirely under a matriarchal domination, thus Ptolemy, seeing his wife and sister, yeah, Cleopatra was his, was his wife, as in a sort of, uh, fuck your mother and your son will be a brother, pharaonic system. Eh? So he saw his wife and sister, Cleopatra, with the help of the Roman Empire and Caesar, destroying the divine rule of the Lion King, you know, the old world's order, through women becoming the sisters of Isis, as in Switzerland's name, conspiring with dark evil forces of the demon goddess Isis and Vatica, as the real essence of the Egyptian biblical story of Eve using the dark python force to dominate her man and finally getting rid of the, oh, the horrible, dominate, <clears throat> dominant essence, as they say so, um, of a male, as they believe so, eh? through two massive world wars, enabling to recreate man, not anymore by the image of God, but the image and will of Vatica, the goddess, and turn them into obedient soy boys in a police uniform, like a pack of hyenas crushing the individual man, like a pet of matriarchal hyenas chasing one individual patriarchal line. So then this man of Pharaoh's house of David came and said, be brothers and don't kill each other, trying to avoid the coming genocide and war on the masculinity. And here it even says in this thing here, that these sisters of Isis want men to be at war with each other. So the women have all the freedom to wage their war on the patriarchy. It says here, peace in patriarchy is war against women. 
by this MM woman, as in my Rammstein film. M in M, M and M. Marilyn Monroe, Mariah Myers, which is of course a pseudonym for the goddess, or, you know. Here with the big oval vulva at the background, like, well, step into my oval office, it says. And that the women want the man to be at war. Terrible murderous hate speech and organized criminal incitement to violence. Well, no problem for Fucktube, nor the Freemason ju judiciary, well, as long as it's not a man inciting and conspiring massive violence. Well, for women, that's fine, says Pharaoh. Therefore, the matriarchal beast, Vatiga, and her sisters of Isis, who burned all the good women at the stakes as well, by the Swiss God and their Swiss book, the Maleus Maleficarum, the Witch's Hammer, and her representation of a hyena with two boys, Ramus and Romulus, drinking milk by the matriarchy, feeding masculinity, raised without fathers due to the horrors matrix of two world wars, sucking in the compulsory teachings of the matriarchy through the spiritual milk of the goddess Vatica. Take a man's children away by the Casp goddess worshippers of the SS social services, kill their fathers in two world wars and have them raised by the matriarchy, by the image of their goddesses, and no more by the image of God. And God is a man who created man in his image. It says in the Bible that God created Adam in his image. So that means God is a man. Eve was created after Adam, of a rib by Adam. So Eve is not, God is not a woman. Eh? So that's why the Satanists, they need a lot of goddesses, right? So that's in fact the matriarchy being the war makers, Isis and all that. And not at all the patriarchy as war makers. No. The men, they, they, they even thought in two world wars, they were defending the family and the women. You see how perverted it is, you know. And they, they didn't have a choice. They were sucked into it by lies and by a conspiracy. By the ISIS worshippers. And the story, that, that, that's why we have all this now, that, that, they all turn it around, you know. It's, it's not the patriarchy, the war makers. Everything is turned around. Everything is upside down. What is up is down, you know. As above, so below. It's why you hear all the time in Hollywood, all the time, motherfucker this, motherfucker that. You know, words we never heard before, right. And it's turned around. It's not a man fucking his mother. I mean, who wants to do that, right. No, oh, it's your mother's fucking you, homie. The Isis sisters. But the story of the pharaonic snake and Adam and Steve, well, you got it again, Adam and Steve, and there are very few good women left, as most of the women made the alliance with Pharaoh's snake and just lie and conspire against man the whole day. This is one of the main reasons for killing the Jewish patriarchy. And soon the Muslim and Chinese patriarchy coming up or coming after or maybe coming down. And look how the metaphorical milk of the matriarchy flows out of eight titties as in octagon or the octagonal cross in the Pope's backyard. No, no, not that backyard, silly. Well, well you're probably right. Well, it looks like a mighty V8 under the bonnet here, eh? as in Rome's mighty V8, killing us all with tits down, bringing havoc and tits up to the white race of Northern Europe. Biggest genocide the world has ever seen. I'll show you what a wolf looks like, you dummies. A noble animal of the northern woods, exterminated by the goddess and her Eves and Steves, solely because it's a spiritual animal, faithful in their male-female divine bond forever, until death do them part. So it had to go, together with the patriarchy, whom you can see here, with an arrow through the proverbial and physical heart, with everything as it should be, dead, 
persecuted and imprisoned like the V8 tits up of Rome's engine or the Rome's monster, now the beast of the Alps and today's Rome and whore of Babylon, with which all nations of the earth traded through her global network of Swiss Nazi Templar banks, Swaziland. Thirdly, the anthropologist talks about the Nordic goddess of the underworld with one eye of fire called Hell, H-E-L, meaning hidden. A Swiss A, hidden, neutral. And guess what the name of the goddess of Switzerland is? Hell Vetia or Hell Vedica. The two goddesses of the underworld all together in one name for the underworld, as in CH Confederatio Hell Vetica, officially for Switzerland, as the Swiss beast home of the devil, with the Vatican belonging to Hell Vetica, and the Swiss police, Swiss guard of the Pope, an equally unique square flag as in the motherland of the Alps the Etruscan cradle of Rome. That's why she's giving the same hail of the hand stretched out like the Pope is doing. She's doing hail Rome, hail Switzerland, and hail Isis, hail Pharaoh, hail Vatica or Helvetica. Also bringing the goddess of the north, hell, and the southern goddess, Vatica, as combining north and south, as we can see today, as the emerged <clears throat> north-south mixture of slaves through a southern invasion, <clears throat> emerging from two into one. Therefore, still today on the Swiss money coins, a Swiss Templar monk from the Crusades collaborating with the Caliph Saladin. Salahdin, and always killing the Europeans, so we can have them all here now, all peoples and all slaves of both North Hell and South Vatica, merging into one Hell Vatica. Well, Swissy financing the sleeper agent uh, Hitler for Hell Vatica, who therefore said. One empire, one leader, a pharaoh, and one people emerged, all emerged into one. Ein Reich, ein Führer, ein Volk. All of this made possible through Helvetica in the Alps, who financed the Nazis to make place, and where all the NGOs are and all the money is, through the Swiss Nazi. Templar banks. That's why it says Helvetia by night. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody sees anything. Helvetia by night. Here, look at the SS sign here. Did deliberately taking away the uh, the eye, <laughs> the eye in the sky. Yeah, the all-seeing eye. And that's why the Swiss Nazi Templars forced the German people to say Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, which most Germans didn't like at all. But hey concentration camps waiting for not doing it. So Hail definitely refers to Hell the Goddess, related to the German word Heilen, to heal. Well, heal, Hell, you get it? Like I heal you from this life and send you to Hell, or heal the community by sending an evil man straight to Hell as they still did with, like for instance, with pedophiles in the good old days, and the rest of them. Helvetica, the whore of Babylon, with whom all nations traded, a true seed of evil, through very dark practices and clean, neutral, innocent, hidden as usual in fine Switzerland, as in the meaning hell for a hidden. And look here you can see all the squares, the whole thing is in a circle which is a compass, so they all read square and compass, yeah, and you got every time four lines, you know, like here four lines, here four lines, and here four lines, four times. 
So here are four horizontal lines here as well. For the horizontal rule, yeah, by the Knights Templars. And here are four vertical lines, just as here. And these ones also four. And this is th the, the, the concept of three, the circle. And here it says, Hell Vetica, the goddess of the north and the goddess of the south, Vetica, all emerging, a synergy, all into one. Eh? And this is what we see today. Look, the whore of the uh, whore of Babylon in the Alps, they even have reptilian money, as I showed you here, my, my older channel, Hatzefratz. I had a lot more, as in my channel, Guri, but it has been taken off. Like there was a 10 uh, Swiss franc um, uh, note um, in which they already showed the um, uh, Nibiru uh, constellation before it was even discovered. Nibiru or something. So I tried to contact the anthropologist waiting, uh, wanting to tell him about the vortex opening up and uh, the visions I saw uh, sparked by those three single historical images and all linked to the Swiss beast home of the devil, Hell Vetica, or here Helvetia, same thing. Alas, very unfortunately, no email to find and only waving the money box around. Hopefully not going to sell goddess pills like Alex Jones, which I find a pity, really. Myself believing that YouTube is about teaming up and communicating. Even answering the dumbest question by the lowest, so to speak. And I promise you, I'll never step on the pedestal or trying to egoistically save my own soul. For I'm just there to serve you and the uncertain future of our children and crush this evil pile of Middle Eastern pharaonic camel shit once and for all and bring the wolves back, both for real and metaphorically speaking, and just as real, out of the virtual, into the 3D. So stand up, you garden gnomes of hell, Vatica, and stop serving the whore of Babylon with her gold pyramid of the Alps in the background, by your Swiss army knife representing the Knights Templars in your belt, and the Vatican key as in their flag also in your belt, with a crown on your head thinking you're the lion and patriarchy, Therefore, your grandma having loads of garden gnomes in a garden saying, Oh, they all work for me. They don't know it. Night, night. Sleep tight, y'all.